In this presentation, we will continue on to part 9 of our C Corporation Comprehensive Problem, this time entering and adjusting entry related to depreciation. Here we are in our form 1120. We're going to jump on over to our Excel worksheet at this point in time. Now I'm going to do a little bit of maintenance from the last point we were at. If you're going straight to the, the number 9 in your worksheet, this may already be done. That means I'm going to unhide some cells. I'm going to unhide some cells between M and R. So to do that, I'm going to put my cursor on M, left click on it, drag over to R, select those cells, and then right click on the selected area and unhide them. Then I'm going to do the same for the cells between F and M. I'm going to do that by going to, to the column E, left click, dragging over to M, letting go, right click in that selected area and unhide. So what's that, what that is going to do is give us our journal entry place that we're, we're going to enter the journal entries into, tax and adjusting entries. And then we have our adjusting entry column and our tax column. I'm also going to ungreen these items to the right. So the green has served its purpose. I want to ungreen so I could use that color somewhere else when necessary. I'm going to ungreen that. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to enter an adjusting entry. Now remember... It depends a lot about, you know, how big of a company you're dealing with and how big of a basically tax firm or CPA firm you're dealing with as to, you know, how many ad adjusting journal entries you may do as you do basically work with a client in tax preparation. In other words, you may just basically be taking the information, it should be good to go, and you'd be doing the tax return with it. Or you may be in a situation where you have adjusting entries and tax entries. It may be the case that if you're at a larger firm or the larger the company is, the larger the firm is that does the does the accounting, the, the more likely those two divisions will be very separate, meaning you'll have someone that does audit and, and accounting stuff that's going to clean up the adjusting journal entries, and when that's done, give it to the tax department. If, on the other hand, you're dealing with a, a smaller firm, then you may be doing quite, quite likely most of, you know, both of those type of things. Therefore, you might be doing adjusting entries and doing the tax entries. Now, typically, you want to you do the adjusting entries before you do the tax preparation, have everything set up. Uh, before you do the tax preparation for it, but uh, there might be some things that you got to kind of go back and forth. There's not a clear line. You're going to have to go back and forth. One of those things could be the depreciation, and that's because the tax software is often what's going to be used to calculate the depreciation for many types of companies. It's going to have the detailed information and provide the schedules that can be used, and it can be used for both book and tax purposes. Also, the idea that we do need separate depreciation schedules possibly if they're running separate depreciation schedules if they're not just on the tax basis between the tax and the books as we'll show in this example problem there's more complication to the depreciation schedule so there may need to be adjustments for that purpose as well at least tax adjustments if not book adjustments as well also if there's purchases or sales that could be that can complicate things such as the depreciation calculation and again, it'll definitely do so at least on a on a book on a tax basis, even if it was if it was recorded properly on a book basis. So that's what we're going to work with here. Now, when we make these entries, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say I'm going to label this either an A for the adjusting journal entries or a T for a tax journal entries. So an adjusting journal entry means we're basically making a financial journal entry to make the books correct, and then the tax the T will represent a tax journal entry. And that'll be in this column to make the tax books correct. So this one is going to get our ending books correct. We're not going to do a lot of these adjusting journal entries here. But again, if you're at a smaller company, you may you may be doing more more adjusting journal entries in order to get the, the books ready to enter to the tax return and then doing the tax entries as well. Larger companies, again, should should have more separation between the, the bookkeeping and the uh, tax preparation and probably a, a line a more definite line between the departments that are going to be dealing with that even in the uh, accounting department if you want to look at more common adjusting journal entries we do have a course on adjusting journal entries on the financial accounting side of things as well so we're not going to be focusing on the depreciation so i'm going to make this one green the accumulated depreciation and then i'm going to go down let's make it the other green that one's a little dark so you can see the wording still and then we'll make the depreciation down here green those are what we're going to be working on now you'll note that only 20,000 was recorded here and we, we filled all this out and we said hey that looks really low 20,000 because when we went over to the depreciation schedule 
Uh, we saw that on the book basis that uh, it's going to be something more like we're calculating the 242.857. So like that looked funny to us. So of course we made a note about that. Now when looking into the detail of the note, we're going to say that some of that information, some, some of the depreciation then that we recorded here actually got recorded into the cost of goods sold. And this could be the case if you're dealing with a manufacturing company. So they might saying that the part of the depreciation is part of the uh, cost of goods sold then. And so it's being, it's being basically expensed up here. So let's just, we haven't seen that example in some of the S corporation and the uh, partnership. So let's take a look at an example like that. We're going to say now that some of the depreciation that's been calculated has been directed to the cost of goods sold. So what would that look like basically in the tax software? We'd have to say, all right, now there's some depreciation that's in here. It's not as clear that it's there because you can't see it because it's basically in the cost of goods sold. How would we deal with that in the software? What we're going to say is the equipment too is part of cost of goods sold. So we're going to put this piece of equipment in the cost of goods sold. And then this one, uh, the 50,000 will be outside of the cost of goods sold. So let's first think about that. We're going to go back to our depreciation schedules. First of all, let's just make sure we're still in balance here. We're going to go back to 1120, go to page six. We're going to say, are we in balance before we start messing with this? We are. All right. So let's do one thing at a time. See if we remain in balance. We're going to go to the balance sheet or the, the data. And then we're going to go to the depreciation. So I want to look at the depreciation schedules. And then uh, we set the form here to be going to the 1120. So now we're going to set the form for the second one, not to be going to the 1120, but to the 1120A, so that it will then be part of the cost of goods sold calculation. So that means if I go back up to the forms, it should be going to the 1120A. So we're going to be pointing it to the 1120A. If we go into the detail for it, there's the depreciation. So note that this amount is going to be the tax depreciation because we still don't want to get to the, we're not to the point where we want to enter the M1 adjustment between the books and the tax. So the, it's good that it's been redirected here. However, it's on the tax basis right now, which isn't what we want. And we know that's also going to throw us off if we go back to the, to the 1120 and page six, because now we have that amount that's showing up there. So I'm going to say, okay, that redirect worked. However, I don't want it there yet. I want to, I want to record this on a book basis. So what I want to have on, on that form at this point in time, and you'll notice the software breaking out bef between form 1120. And then if we scroll down, we see the uh, form 1120 schedule A. So we're looking at the 1120 schedule A, and we want that number to be this number for the book basis. So it's the 235. So I'm just going to put that in the calculator, 235714. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go back to, to the 1125A. And I want to change this number to the book number for now. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to jump to it. I'm going to override it for now. I'm going to change it to that 235714. So there's a 235714 jumping back over. So we forced it to be on the book depreciation. So we need to go back. It will adjust that and remove that override at a, at a future point. Now note that this 900,000 has the depreciation in it. The depreciation is part of it. That's why we're out of balance. So the depreciation is included in this 900,000. We need to break it out here. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to jump to uh, our input information. I'm going to remove it from the purchases with a negative two three five seven one four and call this possibly just depreciation that we're going to be breaking out because that's what was included in the cost of goods sold we see on our income statement there we're going to say that the depreciation was included in that number of depreciation related to the production of inventory it would be so now we're going to go back up top see if that puts us back in balance at this point in time so we're going to go to the form 1120 we're going to go down to page six and say, does that put us back to where we want to be? This number matches that number. It looks good. No M1s. We're at 1,46115. So if I scroll back down, we're at 1,46115. So everything looks good there so far. Now we're going to make the adjustment for the adjusting journal entries for the proper amount of depreciation allocated to the de to depreciation down here and up top. Now the other thing we're going to look into is there was a sale of equipment. So a sale of equipment happened 
and therefore there's going to be a partial year depreciation. Again, we don't want to deal with the M1s between that, between the book and tax difference in accumulated depreciation, but we do want to record the proper current year depreciation. So how can we do this one step at a time? Let's go back to our software. We're going to go back into the detail. We're going to go to the depreciation schedule. And we're going to say the item that was sold was this one, the $50,000 item. We're going to go down to the sale of the asset. Scroll up top. We're going to say the date sold was 061519. So it's in the current year, middle of the current year. Then we're going to say that the sales price, I'm not really concerned with the sales price. I just don't want it to throw me off right now. So I'd like it to be a break-even kind of sales price at this point so that we can go back in and record the sale later because because it, it's already record you know we're already in balance so this will generate a gain what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to say that the sales price now is zero just so it calculates and that's in this software negative one and then we're going to go back up to the forms and then we'll note if i go to the depreciation schedule scrolling up top for the book depreciation let's take a look at we see the sales here the sale is there and therefore the current year depreciation should be calculated properly given the partial year of the sale. If I see if we're out of balance now, I'm going to go back up top to the 1120 and say, does that throw me out of balance? I would expect it would. It does. What would I expect to happen? The software calculating a gain or loss on the sale. So I'm going to go back up top and say, well, okay, where do they put that gain or loss? I don't want to deal with that yet. Here's the gain or loss right here. The 15 uh, 627 loss so 15627 now I don't want to have a gain or loss yet because I want to go back in there later all I want to do is record the proper depreciation I don't want to deal with all these things at one time it's too overwhelming so I'm going to say all right I, I what I want to do right now is record whatever gain I need to have to not to, to break even which so zero to have a zero gain or loss which is 15627 and so that's going to negate the gain right now. So that goes away. Does that put me back in balance down here? I'm going to say, all right, does that put me back? We're back in balance. We're good here. In the, in the notes, I'm going to say something like record uh, proper gain on sale of PPE, property, plant, and equipment. Right, and so we're going to go back in there and adjust that. But right now, I just want to focus on depreciation and be in balance while we do that. Now we're going to check the numbers that we can. We're going to check the depreciation expense and the accumulated depreciation. So if I go back into our worksheet, we're going to go to the depreciation schedules, the book depreciation. If I go to the bottom line here, I'm going to say, all right, if I take a look at everything, let's consider the accumulated depreciation after the sale that happened. So now the sale has been recorded. What should the accumulated depreciation be at the end of the day? Have they recorded that correctly? Is it on the books correctly? Let's take a look at that. We're going to say, okay, it should be to 235714 after removing this accumulated depreciation the current year for the sale uh, plus the 289387 after removing the, the accumulated depreciation for prior years in the sale. So the end of the day, I would expect the 525101 to be the accumulated depreciation. So if I go back over to our return here and say, okay, 505501, that looks correct. All right, so, so that number looks good. Now, I know that this number uh, is, gonna, is wrong. So if I go back over here and say that number up top should be the, the 297 or the, the 2976. So it looks like this is an allocation error between the depreciation expense and the cost of goods sold. So I'm going to take the, the over amount charged to the depreciation expense and post it to the cost of goods sold. Let's see what that takes, looks like. We're going to say, all right, we've got then this amount should be the 2976 after the sale here. So if I go back over and say, let's take a look at that. We need to depreciate or lessen this by... 20,000 minus the 2976 to get it to the 2976. To do that, I'm going to credit the depreciation because the depreciation needs to go down. It's been overposted to. And the other side is going to go to the cost of goods sold, which is where the other place where the depreciation is being calculated. And that's going to. 
So we're going to remove or decrease or credit the depreciation to bring it down. So we're going to put that on the bottom. I'm going to say depreciation is going to be credited, which is the opposite of what we normally do to it because we need to bring that 20000 down. And the other side is going to be going to the cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold, which is where the other depreciation is being stored because it's part of the inventory process. So we're going to say then the amount is going to be equal to the 20000 that is there minus what we need it to be, 2976. And that's what we put in our trusty calculator here that we need it to be. And we're going to say, all right, that means an adjustment of 1724. We're going to have a debit and a credit for that 1724. Scrolling down to the cost of goods sold, this is going to be going up. So we're going to increase this amount by that 1724. And the other side then go into the depreciation. So we're going to go to the depreciation and decrease this amount. That'll bring us down to that 2976. So that's what we, where we want to be. So this is our adjustment. So we got the 2976 and we, our, uh, our accumulated depreciation looks good. And then our cost of goods sold is the difference here. So now we have basically an adjusting journal entry here. And anytime this happens, like if you're going through this process, entering the tax return, you have something in balance and you go back and they say, oh, or and this could be done by someone else. Like the financial department might say, well, now we have an adjusting journal entry. You already have something in balance. Now we want to put it in the tax return in such a way that it will remain in balance, right? So we'll go, okay, I see the two accounts that are affected. I can then put this into the balance sheet in a way that it's not going to throw me off anywhere. So we're going to go back up top and we're going to say that we have an adjustment going to the depreciation. So here's the depreciation, which we have overridden right now. So we have the 20000 in it. I'm going to jump to it. We'll go to the depreciation. Actually, I'm going to go to it this way. We'll go to the deductions, depreciation, and there's our override. Now we could do this with a journal entry. I'm going to go in there and say, all right, I'd like to see both sides of it. So I'm going to decrease the depreciation by the 17024. So I'm going to say negative 17024. That should bring it down to the 2976, which is what we want it to be. The other side went into the depreciation that was on the 1125A. So that's going to be here. Now the depreciation we see that 235714 ties out to our depreciation schedule on a book basis. So we saw that earlier. We said, all right, this number ties out to the uh, 235714 here. So what we need to do is adjust the cost of goods sold side of things. So I'm going to go back up top. So the depreciation portion is wrong. What we need to adjust is the cost of goods sold. So I'm going to go to the cost of goods sold, which is represented in the purchases right now. I'm going to go to the purchases and say that this is going to be the other side of the 17024. So we're going to say 17024. Note, you may even want to mark in the journal entry, you know, you could mark in the software what adjusting journal entry and reference this back you want to delete those later because uh you well, you don't have to but you it'd be preferable or they might show up on some of the schedules in the tax return but it could help you to go back and review it later even years later if, if you keep them in there or to have someone else do the review process if you work that in your system then if we go back to our forms we can say all right there's that this this has been adjusted if we go back into the uh, 1120 and we think about page uh, four, we have, we're back in balance here. We're at the income of the 1461500, 1461500. 1, if we scroll down, that looks good. And we've checked all of our numbers. We had, this was on page one. So page one, we have that. And then the cost of goods sold is here as one number. So it's more difficult to tie out to the tax return. But we see it in the 1125A at in the 719024. So we have the seven, I'm, not, I'm in, sorry, the 917024. So the 917024. And this number in accumulated depreciation ties out to the book uh, depreciation schedule. So that ties out to the book depreciation schedule here at the 235714 and the first page of the 1040 tied out to that 2976. So everything looks go good going forward. What we're going to do is is next time it's going to go back to the 1120 page 6. So we're back here. We're back in balance next time. 
We're going to be looking at the at the uh, M1 adjustment related to depreciation. We're going to now be uh, thinking about the difference between the book depreciation and the tax depreciation.